2021 Ford Bronco First Edition Review, Keep on Rocking in the Real World. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Our first taste of the 2021 Ford Bronco was all too brief. Almost a year after the debut, a full day of bopping about in the hills outside Austin, Texas, followed by a morning of trail work revealed a remarkably capable off-roader that sacrificed very little for its fantastic on-road manners. But that short sample spin in the Bronco left us with plenty of questions. The biggest of those was how would the Bronco fare in the real world? Ford's carefully curated route from ATX to its Bronco off-rodeo revealed precious little about the vehicle's highway manners, just how good it really is on rough tarmac, or how tolerable it'd be in traffic. Are the roof and doors difficult to put on and off? And what about the dreary EPA fuel economy? To answer these questions and others, we lined up a second spin in the Bronco, borrowing a rare first edition model for a week of motoring in Metro Detroit. While this time served as an opportunity to further explore the Bronco's abilities as a daily driver, the timing, the week of the Woodward Dream Cruise, also provided a perfect opportunity to see just how popular Ford's long-awaited revival would be with the general public. Our rating system only finds the Bronco's interior and exterior design to be an 8, but to the folks of Metro Detroit, this new vehicle is clearly a 10. From neighbors wandering over and poking around to the countless people at Ford's Woodward Avenue base where we parked the Bronco when we weren't cruising, passersby couldn't get enough of the Bronco. It's not that difficult to see why. The boxy proportions are perfect on our two-door tester, the four-door model will unquestionably be the volume body style, but for sheer looks, you need to sacrifice practicality. It's all perfectly balanced, with the long hood, short wheelbase, and aero straight belt line complementing the rounded wheel arches and restrained character lines. Our first edition adds some unique graphics, but in our opinion, this style tweak mars the Bronco's otherwise pure design. The first edition cabin treatment doesn't really work either, with black and blue leather upholstery, also available on the outer banks, clashing with too many of the Bronco's paint colors. Unless you order Area 51, Antimatter Blue, or one of the monochrome shades, you'll see an unpleasant mishmash. That said, material quality on our pre-production first edition felt higher than on the vehicles we drove in Austin, which is certainly a win for Ford. One other point we weren't really able to consider in Austin, how the Bronco looks stripped down. Removing the roof and doors has an undeniable effect on this SUV's aesthetic, but it's not always a positive one. Yanking the thick doors reveals sizable sills and jams that mess with the Bronco's lines. Unlike the Jeep Wrangler, the Bronco looks arguably worse without doors. And speaking of that roof, our tester did exhibit some of the scaling that's afflicted early customer units, which Ford is, rightly, addressing with replacement hardtops. There's no question the Bronco is a more comfortable and pleasant daily driver than a comparable Jeep Wrangler. Even fitted with 35-inch tires as part of the first edition standard Sasquatch package, the Ford has dramatically better on-road manners. Michigan's rough roads did elicit some poor body on frame manners, particularly on the bigger bumps, but the effect of those imperfections on the steering and overall stability was far smaller than what you'll find in a Jeep. Where an impact reverberates through the Jeep's steering rack, forcing the driver to hang on for dear life, the Bronco simply shrugs these annoyances off. And on smooth roads, Especially at interstate speeds, the Ford requires few course corrections despite its knobbly, oversized rubber. One of our prime complaints in Austin was the amount of wind noise that crept through the removable hardtop and frameless side windows. While both the Bronco we drove in the Lone Star State and the one we tested in Michigan were pre-production models, it seems Ford has managed to tighten the tolerances since our first drive in June. While wind noise remained an issue here, it was on par with what you'd expect from a hardtop Wrangler. Road noise. Thankfully, remains as hushed today as it was a few months back. A week in the Bronco's 10-way power front seats has us taking back our critiques from the Austin Drive, over several hundred miles and many hours sitting in traffic on Woodward Avenue, these chairs made a far better impression. There's a good level of support, with adequate side bolstering that kept us planted and assuaged our concerns about doors off cornering. The seating position is quite good, too.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.